In our last lecture, we looked at creating a new post. And we saw that this was pretty easy to do, but we left with one thing, one question really in the air, which was, all right, in a perfect scenario, that worked out great because I filled out all of the required information. But what about a scenario, and we know this will come up, where users don't enter all of the required information? How do we guard against that? So in this lecture, we're going to look at how we can perform validation against the user input. So we have our form here. It looks pretty much the same. We're going to jump back to our project. And I'm actually in a new project here uh, under validation. And so let's take a look at this. So we have our admin post controller here. And we have our uh, admin, uh, our save method here, right? So in our save method, all we did was create a um, post, met, uh, post request mapping. And inside the save method, we're, we're accepting a uh, variable called post of type post. And then we're using the post service to save that, right? So this is mostly right, but let's go ahead and get rid of this. We're going to keep our return statement there. And we're going to add something here. So we're going to add a binding result. We'll call that binding result. And we're probably going to need a model as well. So one other thing, let's just come back here. So what we want to do is add the at valid annotation here to our post. And let's jump over to the documentation for that real quick. So all the at annotation type valid says is, hey, constraints defined on this object and its properties are going to be validated. So even if we have annotations that are validation annotations on an object, unless we're asking it to be validated, then it won't be. So here we're saying this particular post needs to be validated based on the annotations on the domain object, right? So let's take a look at that. So if we jump over to the post domain object, you'll see that I started to fill in some annotations here. Things like not empty, not null, size, min1, max2. Uh, we have a not null, not empty. So what we're doing is we're using some different annotations that are already given to us by all the starter poems that we included. And we're using those to define constraints at a property level. So let's just start with one. So our title, we want to be not empty. I mean, in a perfect world, you wouldn't want a one character title. But for this demo sake, we'll say we just we want them to enter something. Right. So what we need to do now is we need to put some logic around that. Right. We need to find out if there are errors of, you know, based on what was submitted to us. And the way we can do that is we can say if the binding result dot has. Whoops, did I spell that right? No. Nope. If the binding result dot has errors. So in this case, we have some errors. We need to do something. All we want to do is return them to the admin post post form. So we're just returning them back to that form. If there are no errors, though, we're going to do something else. We're going to use that same logic that we used before, saved post and we're going to go ahead and save the post. So, and then I'll just bring this back up. And this is, again, this logic right here should look pretty similar because this is exactly what we were doing before when we knew the post was, was good. You know, we have good data. So there's no need to change that logic. But we do need to do something else when there isn't good data. So in this case, we're just returning back to the post form and our post will be intact. So whatever changes we did make, uh, we're just going to display again. 
Um, but this time we're going to have to like show some errors, right? So if we go ahead and refresh this, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> rerun this, uh, we're going to run back to this real quick. And so because all of our domain, so all of our properties have been annotated with which ones we needed. So in this case, let's just look at uh, title. So let's go ahead and log in. And let's go to admin, posts, let's add a new post, and let's just hit submit. So it took us back to the form, and I think if we were to log this out in the console, we would see that there is errors, and there's a bunch of errors actually. But we need to now somehow let the user know that those errors happened. So instead of you watching me type out a bunch of HTML, let me just copy this one just for the title and we'll go from there. So here's what we did. So on the on the div level, we have a teach class of form group. That's by default anyway. So we have a class of form group. And what we also have is a class append. So we're saying, hey, I want you to go ahead and append uh, if the fields dot has errors of title. So if the title field has errors, I want you to append this has error class. And all that is is a bootstrap thing to make it look pretty. So it makes it red around the field and basically gives you some kind of warning that something is wrong. Then we also have a span below our actual text field. So a teach if, again, if this field has errors, I want you to get the error. So again, this is all time leaf and this is all documented very well. So I'll, I'll add a link over to that. And we're adding a class of help block. So now let's go ahead and save this. We shouldn't have to rerun this application. Let's go to add new post and just click submit. So now in this case, we see that the title is required. And actually, let me Let's do something else. Let's, I'm gonna copy in so we can see. I'm copying in the exact for the final result of this form just so we can look at something else. So this is the whole form with that same kind of setup and errors around each of those. Just so I can show you something else. So let's go again, post add new let's submit this now so now the title has this nice title is required message whereas slug says may not be empty keyword size must be between one and two author may not be null what's going on here so by default it's using whatever custom validation message is a part of that particular validator so in the case of a not empty, um, it's going to display may not be empty. Now there are cases where I would want a better message than that. And in the case of title, I have provided a better message. I'm saying title is required. So if we go back over to uh, our editor here, if we look in resources, I've created a messages.properties and here's where we can customize those particular error messages. So if we jump back to post, remember we are providing a not empty constraint on our title. So if we say not empty, then the class name, which is post, then the property name, which is title, this is the particular message that it's gonna use. And again, this is great for, for internationalization because we could have different required mess you know different error messages um, for different languages so I didn't fill all these out I just used one just as an example but that gives you an idea and then with these constraints you can do some other crazy things so size at least in this case it's a list so it recognizes it's a list so min one doesn't mean one character it means one list item so if I were to enter three list items it would say hey I'm sorry, but you, you, you can only enter between one and two. Um, 
And so you can just do some really cool stuff with these constraint annotations. And finally, we're going to have one more issue here. So when we post and then send back to this form, now our author dropdown is empty. And that makes sense because all we've sent back to the view is our post object. So just one more time, we're going to have to add in any other um, any other data that we're going to need back here. So I'm just going to add that in, and at that point, that authors would be available in my view. So let's go ahead and rerun this. Okay, so we're going to create a new post, and I'm going to enter one, two, I'm going to add an author, test, test, and we left out the title and the slug on purpose. So let's go ahead and hit submit. Again, because we're, we're, we've already populated our post object, when we send you back to this form, what you filled out is still already here. So now we just know that we need to fill out a title and a slug, and we should be able to go ahead and save this now. So again, we're taking back to our view. This is that. If we click back to list, we now see that Dan's test that we just created. So I hope that gives you a little bit more insight into what to do when we're creating our resources and how we can use the built-in validation to validate what, what the user is entering.